State Impact Oklahoma follows stories on Oklahoma's government, industry, natural resources, and workforce. I talked to State Impact reporter Joe Wirtz about the rally for the rigs and how taxes affect oil and gas producers. Joe, who needs tax incentives in the oil and gas industry? Well, the oil and gas industry would say that they need it and that uh, they need it to incentivize new drilling. And without these incentives, uh, drilling would go to another state. You'd all see it, uh, the rigs would pack up and move to Texas. Um, but a, a lot of people don't necessarily agree with that. And there's some uh, differences from uh, uh, economists and experts uh, on oil and gas uh, industry that see things a little bit differently. So uh, all producers don't necessarily favor the extension of the incentives. I'm sure they would take it, but not everybody is in agreement that this incentive needs to stay exactly where it is. Sure. Yeah, the oil and gas industry has been uh, very vocal and very, uh, very visible in pushing for these. Um, but not all oil and gas executives feel that way. It's, of course, hard to get one wants to talk about it publicly uh, and, and to, to not go along with the pack and, and stand out and say they don't agree with it. But we've interviewed people, uh, Kaiser Oil, the CFO at uh, Kaiser Francis, Don Milliken says, look, they don't need it. Uh, it's, it's not any incentive for them. There's no doubt that it's a benefit for oil and gas companies. And you might be able to argue that uh, you know, what's good for the bottom line of an oil and gas company, what it increases their profits, will eventually uh, be in bigger payroll, expanded operations. But does it actually incentivize drilling? Would a drilling operation not take place if the incentive wasn't there? How do other states, other energy producing states, handle this issue? Well, again, a lot of people say they will drill where the oil and gas is. That is the number one thing they're after. If you've got oil and gas, they're going to drill there. The tax makeup is all over the place. You've got over 11 percent in North Dakota where there's, it's the most, there's most drilling in the country going on there. Pennsylvania doesn't have any tax on it. Uh, Oklahoma is somewhere in between there. That they base these decisions upon where the oil and gas is and other concerns, infrastructure, transportation, labor costs. It's a different calculation for putting a crew out in North Dakota than it is in Oklahoma. And those are the factors that are really uh, primary when they're deciding where to drill. At least that's what a lot of uh, insiders and economists tell me. The whole idea many years ago was to incentivize this experimental procedure called horizontal drilling. That's right. How prevalent is that now? Boy, in the 1990s, it was a new kind of uh, new, new experimental thing, like you said. Now, it's almost all new drilling. 90% of the new drilling, by the last records I looked at, is horizontal drilling. Uh, so that's really the predominant method of exploration and production, uh, at least new production now. We're not hearing much about this from the legislature, but the governor in her state of the state address did suggest that there probably is some kind of a compromise solution to this issue before this incentive completely disappears in a year. Yeah, look, it's an election year and this is a divisive issue and, and we may see this can get kicked down the road on this and not get taken up till next year. The incentives don't expire until next year, so they could certainly delay it until after the election. Uh, but yeah, I, I think uh, you, you could see some middle ground. Some middle ground there. Uh, and those things usually work out somewhere in between. You've heard 1%, 7%, maybe it'll work out in the middle. Treasurer Ken Miller, a lot of people have talked about bringing up being some wiggle room there. Joe Wirtz from State Impact Oklahoma, thank you. Thank you.